week, Austin Town Fitch went over to Young YSU and played Youngstown Ursula Irish. Yep. What you got, Coach? I'm going to save my commentary. It's okay. going to be short and sweet, but okay. uh, what you got? I'm going to get to you afterwards then. First, before I get into it, bro, I'm going to look at the camera, man. We got to give a shout-out. My boy, Marky Fitzgerald from Fitch, he said his nephew, Giovanni, watches all the time. So shout-out to Giovanni, man. Shout-out to we Giovanni, man. You. We hope you keep watching. We hope one day we'll be on the same show talking about you balling out in high school. Indeed. Now, to the game. Ursuline whooped them, 35 to nothing. Um, that's back-to-back weeks. Ursuline. Against Harding, against Fitch, 35 nothing, 70 to nothing, two running clocks. Ursuline playing their best ball. Defensively, they flying around making plays. They have multiple drives where they force the turnover on downs. Shout out to the, uh, Deshaun Wheel, cornerback, senior, had another pick. Um, he's doing this thing, and they just flying around on defense. I'm pretty sure in the last five games, they only given up 3.3 points a game. In the last five games, they're giving up 3.3 points a game. So the defense is flying around. And then when you talk about that offense, man, you talk about showtime and primetime. They got multiple playmakers. Shout out to Taron Davis. Had a couple good catches. Shout out to the young kid, Ray Javi. He had a big time catch on the fade ball down the sideline. Also playing good at corner. Um, still got Jaquees liaison. They know they got Joe Baylog that could run that ball. But in this game, it was showtime and primetime, <laughs> baby. Um, you got D.C. Farrell, man. 14-17, 254, three touchdowns. Also give you 27 rushing yards and two touchdowns. And then you got Devontae Taylor, 5 for 137 and three touchdowns. Um, at the end of the day, if you're playing against a team with them two type of playmakers and they got a stat line like that, it's going to be hard to win the game. Um, but I want to give another shout-out. We're going to talk about D.C. here a little bit later. People don't talk about his throwing ability enough. They kind of just look at him like he's an athlete. Of course, he can make plays with his feet. But listen, my man was throwing some dots out there. His timing was good. Um, he had two or three throws where he threw him from the hash to the far side field on outs and comebacks. The timing was good. It was on point. The accuracy was good. So I want to give a shout-out to that kid on that real quick. Um, but at the end of the day, Ursuline kind of did what they did. When you look at Fitch, they just couldn't get that run game going. Um, it was multiple times. They was in third and longs. They got stopped a couple times on, on fourth, uh, fourth and short, which you would think would be their advantage. They had a pretty good offensive line that was moving the bodies pretty good. but they just couldn't get that run game going. In result, they had a lot of third and longs. And then if you watch Fitch play this year, I don't know if third and long is – third and long ain't really good for no offense, let alone I don't think it's good for Fitch this year. Um, but they kind of got behind. the def- I thought their defense played solid for the first half because Ursuline really could have had 28 points in the first half. But the Fitch defense, they bowled their neck a couple times, got some stops, made a couple plays. Um, shout out to Rocco DeFlorio. He made a couple good plays. The safety, Deontay Stallings, had a couple nice hits, a couple nice plays. Um, all in all, though, Ursuline got them boys in and out of there. And we're going to see how Fitch bounced back next week against Perry. Um, at the end of the day, you took you took a, you took a spanking against a crosstown rival, but you still 5-1. and one. Everything's still in front of you. Um, and sometimes it's good to – when you play good teams, sometimes, like I always say, when you play good teams around week five, week six, and later, it lets you know exactly what we're good at, what we're not good at, what we're vulnerable at, and when we play good teams, where we got to tighten up at. So that was kind of the game. They got them out of there in and out. Shout out to Ursuline. They're playing good ball right now, five in a row. Yeah, that's a tough draw, week five, Ursuline, mm-hmm. the way they playing, the way they rolling. Um you know, I, I know you went out of the way not to say your boy's name, but man, shout out to look, shout out, shout out to the defense at Ursuline, Coach McGlynn. Yeah, man. Coach McGlynn, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't about to be saying his name all the time, man. He knows. Hey, you, you, you been out the way not to say job, his name, man. The defense flying uh, around, though, man. man. You know what I mean? You know, what, I noticed um, they really got teams scared to play with the middle of the field. Yeah, they second, they got they got one of the best secondaries in Northeast Ohio. Again, you're talking about the young kid Ray Javi at one corner. You got Deshaun Will at another corner. They both got ball skills. Um, got one of my favorite safeties in the area, Luke Kohler playing safety. Um, you got my boy Yanni, number six. He patrolling the middle. Like you said, that middle of the field and that secondary, a lot of teams don't want to mess with you it because it's on film. It. That if it's a tip or overthrow, it could turn into six. The it could turn way, into six. So. Sure. so shout out to the D, man. You know, two weeks, 70 and 0. Yeah. For donuts up there, pitching, pitching shutouts. Yeah, um, and again, the defense, the last five games, they're only giving up 3.3 points a game. And we know how Ursuline's offense is with the playmakers they got. And uh, Coach DeSantis and Coach Reardon kind of being over there, being the masterminds behind it. If you're going to have a defense that give up 3.3 points a game, 
That's looking good for the future that's and the a, rest that's of the a, season. That's, that's a lot of extra <laughs> minutes of sleep on Thursday night. Man, <laughs> and that's a lot of extra possessions for an offense right, that got too right, many playmakers. Right. You know, so, so. Uh, shout out to them. And, um, you know, Fitch, I've I, I seen a young team out there. Yep. A young team out there trying to, trying to scrap, trying yep. to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? They ran a lot of uh, play clock left, play clock right. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just trying to, you know, figure it out while keeping that Ursula offense off the field as much as they can. So, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> it was tough for them, man. Like you it, said, it, it, was, was, it was a tough week. Right. But the one thing I did get from it, though, even to the last whistle, them kids were still out there scrappy, oh, clawing, for sure. fighting, for sure. which let me know they got the right type of kids over there at Fitch. They just need to make some adjustments. They and got a you, good staff. And Coach when you Parker. jump out 5-0, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, you, it's going to happen sometimes. You might, you might want to get back to reality for the second half it's of the gonna season. It's going to happen. I'm sure Coach Parker's find some um, good, some new number money. one goal, wanting to be 6-0 and oh going into week 7. Oh, indeed. He wanted to be playing his best football going into week 11. You know what I mean? So they got Coach Parker. They got a good staff over there. Right. So they're going to make the proper adjustments. The kids showed the fight. So they got the right kids. They talented. So they're going to bounce back. You know what I mean? And we're going to talk about them a little bit later. But they're going to bounce back. But you know what I mean? Like we say every week, make sure you stay here. Stay tuned to interviews, You got to stay baby. tuned. Indeed. We got some post-game interviews coming for y'all. But that was our Ellie House Game of the Week recap, right, brother. Right. We back, baby, between the lines with Coach Stella. We had the Ellie House Game of the Week. I got two players of the game. Senior DC4, Junior Devontae Taylor. I like to call them Showtime and Primetime. That's right, Showtime and Primetime. DC, talk to me. Seemed like tonight was your game. Seemed like you were seeing the field great in the passing in and the running. Tell me what you seen tonight. How was you feeling? Um, we was, I was feeling good. Uh, we really came out. We really capitalized. Did everything our coach told us to do, and we, that's what we did. We came out with the win. I love it. I love it. DC, I don't know if you've been watching the show. We got a debate. Who the best junior receiver in Northeast Ohio? I'm a little biased, but talk to me. Who the best receiver in Northeast Ohio? Who the best receiver in the state? I mean, I don't think that's the question. I get every ball that's thrown my way. You know, quarterback puts in a great place. I just go get it. Hey, simple and sweet. DC, talk to me. I'm going to piggyback off that question. When you look out to your left or your right, you see you got one-on-one with this guy. Tell me what you're thinking every time. I'm taking him over anybody. I'm taking him over anybody. I'm throwing it. I know he's going to make a play, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just throw it up to him. I love it. I love it. Talk to me again. Talk about your defense, though. This back-to-back week, she'll go 35 nothing at Harding, home against Fitch, 70 to nothing with two running clocks. Y'all got a lot of explosive playmakers, but your defense got back-to-back nights. Talk about a couple kids on the team, on your defense, and talk about what it means for your team moving forward. Oh, it's just not a couple. It's our whole defense. Our whole defense played as a unit, and the rest of the season, our defense is going to keep playing the way they are. Man, you heard them. Hey, showtime, prime time. They don't got to talk a lot. They game do all the speaking. Before we get out of here, we do shout outs. DC, look in the camera. Anybody you want to shout out, mom, pops, the team, whoever, you could do 10 or you could do 100. Talk to them, baby. Uh, I shout out my mom, shout out my dad. They put me, they make sure I was here, make sure I did everything right. And uh, I shout out Ursula. We, we them boys for real. They them boys, you heard them. DC, I mean, I'm sorry, Devontae, shout out. Shout out anybody you want to, man. Give a lot of people some love, man. Uh, all my family, our whole team, coaching staff, everyone, be there for us. Hey, they simple and sweet here. They humble kids, but I've said it again. Showtime, prime time, they game, do a big speaking. Hey, five in a row, keep it going. Hey, between the lines with Coach Stella, you know how we do. We out of here. Hey! We back, baby, between the lines with Coach Stella. We got the Ellie House game of the week. We got head coach Dan Ridden right here. Coach, great win, 35 to nothing. That's back-to-back weeks, 35 to nothing, running clock against two good programs. Talk to me about what that means. Man, so, so first of all, I was telling some of the other media outlets that, that we've had our best two weeks of practice probably in the past three or four years, these past two weeks. And, mm. and you know how I feel about practice performance. It carries over the games. And, uh, you know, it's something that, that, that we you know, as coaches, we're always preaching it, but we've really taken big steps as a program the past two weeks, just having fun at practice, competing at practice, and uh, you know, then our, go, our guys go out and play like it. So, so I'm proud of that first and foremost. Um, you know, our, our, our defense two weeks in a row, man, flying around, hard to move the ball on them, making plays. You know, when the offense has good field position to, to get the drive stopped. Um, you know, so really, really proud of proud of their effort, proud of our coaches putting good game plans together. You know, offensively, we, we were we were a little bit sloppy up front in the first half. They hit us for some negative plays. Um, you know, caught us on a couple blitzes. I felt like we cleaned it up at halftime. And the kids really did a great job in the second half. Coach, I was going to talk about the defense next. Coach, just talk about the defense. Of course, 
You guys have a lot of playmakers. Media outlets like us always talking about the playmakers, the guys that score touchdowns. But talk about that defense. Again, back-to-back -back weeks, 35 to nothing, two running clocks. And a lot of it had to do with the defense yeah. as far as getting off the field and getting that explosive offense the ball back. What did that mean for your offense? Yeah, and again, I mean, I mean, going back to last week, I mean, there, there were a couple of times Harding, Harding was driving and we, we got picks and, and uh, you know, we, 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 we think our secondary is as good as anybody out there. And, and if we can get teams in long yarded situations and force them to throw, you know, our guys take a lot of pride in it. They, they, they're covering well right now. And, uh, you know, D will had another pick tonight, man. He, he, I wish he would have played football the past two years. <laughs> you know, finally got him to come out off the basketball court this year. And I mean, I've watched him play lockdown defense on, on, on the hardwood, and, and I knew he was going to be a great corner. And, and he even sur he, he surpassed he, even what I thought he would do this year already. And um, every week he's getting better and better and better. So 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 it's really fun to watch him. Coach, you said it. I think you got one of the best secondaries in Northeast Ohio. Also, you talked about Deshaun Wheel, uh, Ray Javi seemed like a young kid that's playing well. Uh, Luke Kohler is one of my yeah. one of my favorite safeties in Northeast Ohio. Period. I think he's one of the best football players in the area. Let's talk about the other side, though, Coach. You got DC, you got Devontae, Ray Javi. We talked about Joe Baylog, Key and Marquise Patterson tonight. It's electric, yeah. Coach. But before we get to all that, just talk about the progression of your offensive line up front and how they unlock Pandora's box so you can get all them guys the ball. Yeah. So, so again, I thought they were a little bit sloppy in the first half. I thought they did a great job in the second half. And uh, you know, we 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 have several young guys. You know, we have two seniors starting, and then we have several young guys, a couple sophomores in there, and, and they're getting better and better and better each week. Seth Bowen, um, William Sanders. I, I mean, they're getting better and better each week, but they're they're young. I mean, they're sophomores. Tonight was their sixth game of their high school career as starters, and you know, you you can see daily progression out of those two guys, and they're going to be really darn good football players when it's all said and done. And uh, um, I mean, they're pretty pretty good right now, and they're getting better every single day. So, so it's fun to watch. But um, you know, Phil Bowser, Bryce Crawford are two tackles. Both are experienced guys. Both are really good football players. And uh, um, you know, as our O line gets better and better and more veteran, and, and, and those young guys get reps. I mean, I, I, I've said I said this all off season. I think I think this team has a lot of the right pieces to make a deep run in the playoffs. And I, we we got to go executing all those things. There's a ton of football to be played before we're talking about that. But if we if we keep practicing hard, if we be, if we if we're for that great practice team, mm -hmm. like I, th I I think we got a ton ton of upside on this football team. Last question, Coach. We talked about your defense, the offensive line, and all the playmakers. Tonight we named D.C. Farrell and Devontae, the players of the game. Yeah. D.C. five total touchdowns, Devontae three catches. Coach, I'll call them Showtime and Primetime. That's my name <laughs> for them. Showtime and Primetime. But let's talk about them two specifically about what they bring to your team, not just offensively, but as a whole. Their swagger, their playmaking, and the confidence I'm sure they instill in their teammates. Yeah, so first of all, they're, they're both great kids. I, I, I mean, they're great kids. Um, you know that catch Devonte made. I mean, I, I, mean, I mean, I see, I see catches like that in practice, practically every day, and and, and it's awesome when he comes out here on the game field and 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 can do it in front of, in front of a big crowd and in a prime time situation. And uh, you know, people are gonna be talking about that catch. And it's like, yeah, pff, shoot, he did that on Tuesday. I saw saw the same thing. You know what I mean? So so we get spoiled, um, but 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 he has so much upside as a receiver. I mean, he's still raw. He's he's a junior. Week six junior. Yeah, I mean, he has a ton of footballs in his high school career. And I really believe sky's the limit for him. You know, talking about D.C., same thing. Great kid. I mean, when the ball's in his hand, everybody's holding their breath because you never know. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, he had a couple of plays where he's kind of penned up and he's leaking out for some positive yards, scored a touchdown. And that touchdown wasn't how it was how we drew it up necessarily. But we, but it works out. But, um, you know, the thing about D.C., that, that – that is underrated or underappreciated. People don't realize how good of a passer he yes. is. And, um, you know, they, they think he's just an athlete yes. back there and he's not. He can throw the football and uh, he's very efficient when he does. I mean, he he's completing about 70% of his passes on the season. And that ain't easy to do, you know that. So. Yeah. And the coach, I agree with you. He made a couple of throws tonight. Everybody going to talk about Devontae's catch over here with the late hands and the one hand. I mean, but you got to catch it. He put it into place. Yeah. But I was more impressed. D.C. had a couple uh, hash to feel out routes yeah. that he threw. Long that the timing, yeah. long routes, but the timing yeah. of it was perfect and the placement. So, Coach, congratulations on another win. Before we get out of here, you know, we like to give shout-outs, Coach, family, team, whoever you want to shout-out, Coach, give them some love. So, so first of all, I mean, our players, I, so, so proud of, the, of of how they're playing right now. And, and again, we're only six games in. We, 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 
we got to keep getting better and owning our mistakes and correcting our mistakes and all those things. But proud of our players, proud of them for doing it. Yet, you know, two really good local mm -hmm. rivals that I have a ton of respect for and, and, and how they play these two weeks. Proud of my coaches for putting them in, in those situations. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it's it's a team effort kids, coaches, fans, the, the, the whole person community. But um, I got to shout out my family too, gotcha. you know, so, so so my wife, Amanda, and all my kids and everything. So I got Patrick running around. He's yep. our head ball boy over here. So he'll be, he'll be a freshman for us next year. But, um, you know, two, two fun weeks in a row, and hopefully we can keep it going. Coach, congratulations on the win. Yeah, two great wins in a row. You know we love you here. We out of here between the lines with Coach Stella. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Stay locked in between the lines with Coach Stella. Ah! Uh -huh.